the moon, our nearest neighbor in space, had been extensively observed and photographed in December 1968 when the Apollo 8 astronauts Borman, Lovell, and Anders journeyed to within 70 miles of the lunar surface. From their relatively close vantage point, the astronauts obtained detailed photographs of the moon and of potential landing sites for future manned missions. The historic Apollo 8 mission had demonstrated the capability of manned space flight to lunar distances to orbit the moon and to return safely to Earth. To fulfill this nation's goal of landing men on the moon, one spacecraft element remained to be tested in the manned flight program. The critical manned operational test of the lunar landing vehicle was the primary objective of the 10-day Earth orbital mission of Apollo 9. The lunar module is a two-stage vehicle designed to soft land two American astronauts on the moon. The lower section, the descent stage of the module, will be used to control the actual lunar landing and serve as a platform for liftoff. The ascent stage will be used to lift off from the moon and return the astronauts to the orbiting command module. Apollo 9 was the first mission in which the full three-module Apollo spacecraft consisting of the command and service modules and the lunar module, was launched as part of the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle. The command and service modules had been flown previously on two manned missions. The lunar module had been tested alone during an unmanned orbital mission. Following the mating of the three-module spacecraft to the Saturn V launch vehicle, the combined 363-foot Apollo Saturn V was readied, then on January 3rd, moved to launch pad A at Complex 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. While Apollo 9 primarily demonstrated the performance of the lunar module through space maneuvers and engine firings, it also proved the compatibility of the three modules of the spacecraft to perform combined operations typical of a lunar mission. The performance of the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle, the astronaut crew, and the worldwide mission support facilities were demonstrated again by this mission. On February 26th, the final countdown of the Apollo 9 was begun by the Kennedy Space Center launch team under the direction of Dr. Kurt Debus. In mid-count, a three-day hold was called when the crew physician, Dr. Charles Berry, detected that all three Apollo 9 astronauts had minor colds and sore throats. The final countdown was resumed on March 1st. Because two of the Apollo 9 crew, James McDivitt, the command pilot, and Russell Schweikert, the lunar module pilot, were to transfer from the command module to the lunar module during the flight, they wore heavier space suits, equipped for activity outside of the spacecraft. David Scott, the command module pilot, wore a lighter weight space suit. On the morning of March 3rd, the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle stood ready for its mission. The flight crew arrived at the White Room and prepared to enter the Apollo spacecraft about three hours before liftoff. As the countdown proceeded smoothly, the launch director, Rocco Patron, ordered the Apollo access arm moved from the spacecraft and the launch escape system armed. In the launch control center, a number of NASA officials monitored each step of the terminal countdown. These included Dr. George Miller, Dr. Werner von Braun, and Admiral Roderick Middleton. Vice President Spiro Agnew, accompanied by Dr. Thomas Paine, director of NASA, and astronaut Frank Borman were on hand to witness the Apollo 9 launch. As with the three previous Apollo Saturn V launches, the countdown reached ignition precisely on schedule.
Apollo 9 rose from its launch pad at exactly 11 a.m. on March 3, 1969. Within seconds, the space vehicle passed through a dense cloud formation at 4,500 feet. Oh, and pitch program are in now to put Apollo 9 on the proper flight, azimuth, and attitude. Apollo 9, you are go all the way. Everything looks good. Roger. As seen here from airborne cameras, the five engines of the first stage operated with intolerances, boosting the six and one half million pound space vehicle to an altitude of 40 miles. Engines shut down and separation of the first stage then occurred. A six minute, seven second burn of the second stage propelled Apollo 9 to an altitude of 121 miles and a speed of 15,000 miles per hour. At eight minutes, 44 seconds, the third stage was ignited for the first time and then burned for two and one half minutes to place itself and the spacecraft into a near circular orbit of 118 miles. During the second revolution, the command service module separated from the third stage, maneuvered 180 degrees and maintained station keeping for one half hour. While passing over the United States, the command module docked with the lunar module. After assuring that the tunnel joint between the two spacecraft was rigid, and after checking all systems, the astronauts separated the entire Apollo spacecraft from the third stage. A short burn of the spacecraft main engine maneuvered it 2,000 feet away from the third stage. The engine of the third stage was then reignited for a second and third time increasing its speed to an Earth escape trajectory. The stage was thrust into solar orbit in order to avoid later recontact with the spacecraft. On the second day of the mission, the crew fired the spacecraft's main engine three times, which placed them in an elliptical Earth orbit of 125 miles by 312 miles. These maneuvers shifted the spacecraft so as to obtain proper lighting for the rendezvous maneuvers conducted later in the mission. At the same time, the burns also reduced the command service module weight to enhance possible rescue of the lunar module crew after separation of the two spacecraft. The lunar module was entered for the first time on the third day. Motion sickness experienced by Schweikert and flight activities caused the crewmen to be delayed one and one half hours in the actual transfer. At 43 hours into the mission, McDivitt and Schweikert crawled through the tunnel into the lunar module and activated its systems for the first time. Following a three-hour check of the lunar module, the descent engine, which will be used for lunar landing, was fired for the first time under control of the lunar module autopilot. Manual throttling was demonstrated during the burn, as well as attitude control of the lunar module. At the conclusion of the tests, and after shutdown of the lunar module systems, the astronauts returned to the command module. The main engine of the spacecraft was then fired for the fifth time to circularize the orbit for the lunar module rendezvous later in the mission. McDivitt and Schweikert returned to the lunar module on the fourth day. Following startup and check of the module systems, the astronauts prepared for extravehicular activity. Schweikert began a 38-minute period of activity outside the spacecraft as Apollo 9 passed over the United States on its 46th revolution. During this activity, Schweikert retrieved a thermal sample from the exterior of the lunar module and evaluated the effectiveness of the lunar module handrails. He reported excellent results, stating that he could maneuver himself to any position and remain there with ease. He also reported that his suit was cool and comfortable at all times while outside the spacecraft. At the same time, David Scott partially emerged from the command module hatch to retrieve a thermal sample from the surface of that spacecraft. Scott and the command module were photographed by Schweikert while he was outside the lunar module. A seven and one half pound television camera 
which will be used on the lunar surface, was then tested inside the lunar module. The transmission was received by ground stations at Goldstone and Merritt Island. Picture and voice quality were excellent. Oh, that's a, you're coming through loud and clear, Rusty. Crazy, you're eating voice now. Okay, we're in the process of recharging the bliss. Uh, we recharge it with oxygen, and uh, we've just put in the water, and we're going to bend now. Lemon CSMS band flight. Raj. Uh, Raj, your picture is good. We can see you loud and clear. Going down the checklist there like a good pilot. Right. The critical rendezvous maneuvers between the lunar and command modules were scheduled for the fifth day. The rendezvous exercise began with another check of the activated lunar module systems by McDivitt and Schweikert. Then, on direction from mission control, astronaut Schweikert fired the lunar module small maneuvering engines and slowly separated from the command module. For the first time, a manned lunar module was operated in space solely on its own power. Following operational tests, McDivitt and Schweikert prepared to fire the lunar module descent engine. Approximately three miles from the command module, a maneuver was initiated to thrust the lunar module into a simulated lunar orbit and rendezvous trajectory. After separating to a range of 86 miles, Lunar module staging was initiated using the small maneuvering engines. The ascent stage engine was then ignited and burned for several seconds. The manned ascent stage then began to move in along its rendezvous trajectory with the command module. This was the most critical maneuver of the entire mission. Since the lunar module is not capable of entering the Earth's atmosphere safely, the two astronauts had to rejoin the command module for return to Earth. After a separation of almost six hours, and after traveling more than 100 miles from each other, the two spacecraft rendezvoused on schedule at an imaginary point in space. Station keeping was maintained at a distance of 100 feet for photography of the spacecraft. Successful docking of the lunar module with the command module was completed at 98 hours and 59 minutes into the mission. After the crew returned to the command module, the ascent stage was again separated. By ground command, its engine was reignited and burned to depletion to place the ascent stage into an orbit of 4,312 by 143 miles. Since the lunar module life support systems are designed to last approximately five days, all lunar module tests had to be conducted early in the mission. During the remaining five days in orbit, the pace became more relaxed. Time was devoted to navigation sightings, general crew flight experience, and to Earth terrain photography. Special attention was given to previously unphotographed areas in the higher latitudes. These included the east coast of the United States from Norfolk to Long Island, Cape Hatteras on the Carolina coast, the expanding cities of the New South, Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, and Charleston, South Carolina. A striking view of the Grand Canyon in the southwestern United States was also photographed. Clearer views of previously photographed areas were obtained, including the Southern California coastline and the home of the astronauts, Houston, Texas. The astronauts also conducted an extensive multispectral terrain photography experiment. It involved the use of four synchronized cameras containing special film and filters to photograph selected areas of the Earth. Such photography can be used to study the movements of river sediment along shorelines. 
survey timbered areas for early detection of fire or blight dangers, detect crop diseases and locate mineral deposits. A potential space technology application to help man make better use of the Earth's resources. In order to avoid high winds and heavy seas in the planned recovery area in the Atlantic Ocean, an alternate recovery zone 540 miles to the south was selected by Mission Control and the Apollo 9 crew. The new recovery zone required one additional orbit of the Earth, the 152nd, and added 26,000 miles and 98 minutes to the flight. A 12-second burn of the main engine over Hawaii slowed the spacecraft to deorbit velocity. Following the burn, the command module separated from the service module and entry was begun at 400,000 feet over the United States. The drogue chutes and the main parachutes of Apollo 9 were deployed on schedule over the Atlantic Ocean. Apollo 9 descended to the blue Atlantic waters within sight of its recovery ship. Splashdown occurred at 12.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, March 13th, approximately 300 miles northeast of Puerto Rico. Recovery of the Apollo 9 astronauts and the spacecraft by the crew of the USS Guadalcanal marked the end of a critical manned space mission, a mission which qualified the last major component in the Apollo program required for the lunar landing. The historic six and one half million mile Earth orbital flight of Apollo 9 successfully demonstrated all of the techniques and maneuvers necessary to land men on the moon, to lift off from the lunar surface, and to rendezvous and dock with the command module. This experience, in addition to that gained on the lunar orbital mission of Apollo 8 and the long duration Earth orbital mission of Apollo 7, demonstrated the capabilities of the entire Apollo Saturn V space vehicle the crew, and mission support facilities. All needed to fulfill this nation's commitment to land men on the moon and return them safely to Earth prior to 1970.